All right, welcome back, everybody. So I watched the other tutorial videos. They were fun and interesting, but there was no more actual tutorial gameplay. So now we're going to join the story. We're just going to jump in do the story campaign. So I'll keep the name as MultiGK. Uh, I like the color red. Difficulty normal? Yeah, it's not too easy. We'll do it normal. Uh, what kind of dragon? Saber dragon. The most versatile of dragon kinds. A saber dragon is a formidable foe that combines might and mind to overcome his enemies. Uh, the technology I'll have is Soar, which increases my fly speed. Uh, sabotage, which means I disable the primary functionality of enemy unit, so I can like stop it from shooting or something. Advance. Uh, all friendly units in a 1700 meter radius around you receive a 60% increase to their speed. So I'm faster, I can stop them from working, I can make my guys faster, and I will already have a hunter. Alright. Mountain Dragon. Lead cutthroat lives amongst the frozen peaks of the north. It is raw power above all that they depend on in combat. Uh, so they can have an Acid Blaze, which is actually something we had in the tutorial. Uh, your fireballs become acid for 13 seconds when they hit enemies. Those acid attacks keep hurting them. So I think it's like same damage, but keeps hurting them for a while. Blood Leech. When you damage an enemy, 30% of their of the damage gets added to my life force. So this is like rehealing. Okay, so that's interesting. This one's like really fast and can disable enemies. This one's uh, just a lot of like uh, damage and uh, a little bit of health steal. And I can actually... Oh, his regeneration is just twice as fast as normal. So they're, re they're regenerative and just blood steely. Um, allows the construction of warlocks in your battle forges. These units use magic to take down foes when upgraded and cast powerful spells. I like the mountain dragon so far. Cypher dragon or Zephyr. Uh, proud and highly gifted Zephyr dragons or Cypher uh, dragons try to avoid overly physical confrontations but for, prefer instead to skillfully liquidate their enemies with magic. So purifying flames, advantage. Upon activation you, re you, re you fire restorative charges for 10 seconds. Uh, when colliding with a friendly unit they restore 172 hit points. Unlike your standard fire attack these charges do not overheat. Do they do damage to enemies, though? Interesting. Ray of Power. You fire a beam at a friendly unit or allied dragon, which increases its damage by 175%. Damn. The beam lasts for 38 seconds, but this continues sooner if the distance between you and your beneficiary becomes 200... bigger than 2,000 meters. So I have to be close to them, and firing this beam... I don't know if I can fight while I'm doing it. I think I have to shoot this instead of my fire. Friends with benefits. Eh. This is a skill specifically made to protect your, dra to your teammates dragon or units. A shield is cast on your allies dragon or unit and any hit and click down the shield reduces the damage taken by 50% and also heals your own dragon for 100% of the damage done. Wow. So I heal I shield them and also heal myself. Interesting. And shaman. Didn't the other guy start with shamans? Oh no. Warlocks. Healing and repairing from the units. I don't like this guy so much. He's got a weird mix of powers that I'm not entirely sure I'd know when to use. And that's it. Okay, Mountain Dragon, let's go. Hmm. Thousands of years ago, Sigurd I built incredible engines of war, and with them, forged an empire. The emperor married and sired many children. He even had a love child with mysterious Aurora, an ancient dragon in a woman's guise. Once united, peace was declared. Damn, that's and lagging bad. And bloodshed soon forgotten. But Sigurd's realm of peace was shattered when his own sons and daughters rose against him war returned with a vengeance and annihilation reached new heights desperate to safeguard Sigurd's legacy the wizard Maxos sought the help of the one child that never betrayed his father Sigurd and Aurora's son the half dragon prince he would be the one to save the Empire from ruin and, to aid him in his quest, Maxos delivered unto him the Imperial command ship known as the Raven. 
This is the story of Maxos and the Dragon. This is the story Me. of the Dragon Commander. Me. <laughs> Interesting. Wow, these videos are too beautiful for my computer. Anno Revolionis. Is that the year? 8800? Alright. The Revillian, the Revelon times. Sigurd the first, Emperor of Revelon, murdered. Sons and daughters go to war. Siblings vie for the throne. No quarter is given. Decades of peace end on bloody but battlegrounds. So apparently my father was keeping the peace between all the races and everything. Undead proclaimed war, uh, proclaim war as the punishment from the gods. War raged with terrible contraptions. Elves and lizards horrified. Imps delighted! Gold prices skyrocket. War not all bad, say the dwarves. <laughs> and Emperor's political popularity among the different races. 50-50, huh? Emperor as in me, I wonder? Welcome, noble dragon, to the Raven. This wonder of engineering. This miracle wrought in magic that has a living demon for a heart. Interesting. Were you the, the narrator? <laughs> but I looked into Between the knowledge I shall pry from this infernal creature's cryptic mind and the avalanche of tomes, manuscripts, and blueprints aboard awaiting study, we will catch up with our enemies in no time and claim back the lands they have taken by force. Our task is monumental, but we will not have to face it alone. Two famed generals are here already. Loyal to the legacy we are trying to save, and therefore loyal to you, given time. I have furthermore enlisted the service of Grumio, an imp of devilish cunning that can fashion anything my research will uproot. Already he has created you a wonder he calls a jet pack. <laughs> Talk to these men, get your bearings, and begin your conquest. If you have any more questions, you can find me in the royal chamber, which I shall use as a study. Good luck, dragon. May the divines be with you. Yes. All right. Here's a dude. Henry. Let me tell your right of the bat bastard that I hold you in very little regard. Your father may have been a great king once, but this last decade, a crowned pig would have played the part better. I see. He became a vainglorious fool, a sloth, and a coward. No wonder then that his own children could amass armies unperceived and strike at the heart of a kingdom in a matter of days. He tried to run, but he failed, and they slew him where he stood. Now the realm has been shattered, and vultures are picking what they can from his corpse by means of new and terrifying war machines. Hmm. I'd say all is lost, but Maxos insists you are to be the one, the hero, who will take back the land we've lost. Excuse me if I laugh in derision. Ha! <laughs> Still, you are a dragon, I'll give you that, and of ancient blood. Prove to me you have the rocks to do undaunted battle, and perhaps my respect may still be yours. Hmm. Tell me about your colleague, the other general. Edmund, he's called. A lizard of the House of Carcharus. In truth, I'd rather sleep with Syphilis Incarna than have him aboard. But there's no denying his talent. He's as arrogant as he is astute. And as ingenious as he is insufferable. Why don't you offer him a word of welcome? I know I won't. <laughs> I have a name, you know. It's not Bastard. Aye, and you have titles as well, but none of them King, as yet. I'll address you with the right regard the day you prove worthy of it. I see. Damn, you're, you're pretty rough. But do you have a name, then? Henry of the House of Lancefoot. More you need not know. I shall take my leave then. Let's see, is anybody else here talkable? Let's see what this is. The map. 
Well, I don't want to be in the strategy phase yet. The bridge, yeah. Back to the bridge, man. I, I haven't done anything yet. Oh, okay, so I must be on the bridge right now. So I gotta go to the bar. Next. Edmund, I presume? It, I the dragon son of a monarch deposed. Rightful heir to the throne, even if he was born out of wedlock. Yes, yes. No doubt that bore of a Henry has already introduced me in his ever-elegant way. So here I am. Lord Edmund Augustus III, Duke of Hawknest Hall. I'd add at your service, but I don't think we're quite there yet. I'll put myself sooner or later. To be perfectly honest, I'd normally entertain the idea of lending my expertise to your cause as curtly as I'd consider attending a dwarven opera. But not unlike my fellow general, it is Maxos's backing of this enterprise that has me intrigued. You have doubts benefit, Dragon. Let's see how far it takes you. That is incredibly interesting. I love how the lizards are very formal. Apparently the undead are extremely religious. It's all very interesting. Huh. I, send a, I sense a lot of distrust in you, Edmund. When one dwells among the highest echelons of power, where ambition runs thicker than blood, distrust is your best friend, as is its brother, Caution. In your case, though, the waters of misgiving run somewhat deeper. You are, after all, but a half-dragon. They call your kind Dragon Knights to lend an air of nobility to a lowly mixed breed. Not many make the distinction, even, but the crucial oh. difference is in purity. Human ancestry taints your being, for humanity and weakness are two sides of the same tuppence I drop in beggars' hats. Wow, what bastards, all of you. Every single last one of you. I, I, man. A bastard twice are you, my lord. Bastard born and bastard bred. And what is your take on this war, then? Only that it was bound to happen. For when an emperor weakens, his empire weakens with him. Now a litter of dogs is fighting for the throne. So maybe their dragon half-brother can walk away with it. You are all assholes. Is there anybody else to talk to? We have a lot of people, though. That's good. The engineering bay. Maybe you'll be a little bit nicer. I'll talk to him first. Greetings, sire, sprung from kings. I am Grumio, son of Grumio, an imp of good and honest standing. Your technician, shall I be, if it pleases you. Your engineer and architect. <sighs> a little bit more like it. I hope you'll like my jetpack. It is my gift to you to keep without recompense for. Gladly shall I remain aboard this wondrous ship to tinker and toy, hammer and hew. Well, aren't you just adorable? I love your teeth. She is <laughs> special, this vessel. Filled with wonders undiscovered. The wizard, he feels it too. The taste, the tingle of mystery. Oh, to unlock its secrets. Let's have a look at the results of your research, then. Right home, my lord. New unit types and unit upgrades can be unlocked by spending research points. The more countries you occupy, the more research points you receive per turn. Some research items are grayed out. To unlock them, you need to research prerequisites first or progress further in the story. Interesting. So I don't have a hunter at all. Or a shaman. I just have a warlock straight up. Nice. I wonder what I do have. Like, it's interesting. A cloak from a warlock warlocks. Becomes nearly invisible for 150 seconds. Interesting. I haven't used warlocks at all actually, so this is really cool. Research technology. I have a grenader, a trooper, and a warlock. So I have like two, one guy from each building basically. No, two from the battle forge. All three from the battle forge. So I basically just have infantry. Sounds interesting. As far as basic, so unit research, basic, advanced, 
units, and then expert units, and then master level reason, yeah. What do I have then for advanced, if anything? Yeah, nothing. Meet the Beatles! Nice. This game has a decent level of depth, honestly. Sorry if it looks ugly again, I, it's supposed to look way better, but it lags so bad. I have 20 research points exactly, but I can't get these. I mean, so these need to be further in the story, so if they're grayed out, I need to be further in the story. Then. Advanced as well? No, so advanced can be gotten, except for the unit before you can do that. Alright. Alright, that's pretty cool, man. I wish I could know what I'd want, perhaps if I knew more of uh, the missions ahead. War Factory unit, which I don't think I have any War Factory units at all. Can I get that guy? Anti-air turrets... Transport, Shaman, Hunter, War Factory. I guess I already have the buildings, I just don't have all the units. I'm kinda confused about that. Uh, your troopers cannot take over enemy buildings. Multiple troopers can acquire them quicker than one. That's probably useful. Engines oh wow, double speed on troopers. I don't know. I really don't know what I want at all. Uh, advanced. For the Empire, Corps of Lord lost troopers to self-destruct. They rush their enemy and explode when nearby, doing 750 damage. That's crazy. Suicidal. And as far as I can tell, the only technology I have is for infantry. So I guess I'll get me a tank, man. I'll get me the mo that armor, I guess? From Advanced? Because I have 20 research points, and I can't get anything from Expert. Ironclad and arm armor. I know an armor. And a Zeppelin. No. Um maybe like a hunter and a shaman. And if we need an anti-air turret, I'll be the anti-air turret. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. What is this? Oh, that's to... Okay, do the research on my own, then. The Royal Chamber. Okay, well, I already spoke to you, but I don't see anything else. So I'll speak to you one more time. Never hesitate to seek my counsel, Dragon Knight. Tirelessly, I study and question in the knowledge that my discoveries will make you the mightiest dragon ever to have soared the skies. Yeah, we haven't discovered our character. I think I definitely do want to be the best, like no one ever was. Yeah, probably. We too shall unite dragons' daring with wizard's wisdom. Nothing shall stand in your way. Yes. Why do I feel like this guy's gonna be a villain? Like, he's just gonna turn on me like, Hey, I'm a wizard and I got all the knowledge. I want to be the king. Ha 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 ha. That's just the feeling I get. Uh, let's see. Um... Tell me about war and peace, Maxos. How did we get here from where... How did we get where we are now? That is quite a tale, my friend. So bear with me. Since the dawn of time, beautiful Rivalon has been a stage of bitter rivalry, strife, and war. Haughty humans, all too lofty lizards, dogged dwarves, erratic elves. 
Irrational imps, dogmatic, undead. And yes, wayward wizards even. Couldn't forego the time it takes for the moon to wax and wane without turning to fresh violence. Hmm, I see. Peace. The word itself hardly had a meaning. It was an abstract. Until after long and dark ages, three men decided they had had enough. I was one of them. The other two were your father Sigurd, and an eccentric inventor known only, even by us, as the architect. I see. We knew war would continue everlasting, unless one king would stand up, conquer all feuding factions, and unite the manifold battling races under the banner of a single world-spanning empire. Easier said than done was, I believe, our initial reaction. But you did it, and I could too. It was the architect who provided us with the answer to the question how on earth we would go about <clears throat> enacting such an unparalleled enterprise. He said he had ways and means to provide your father, a battle-hardened warlord in his own right, with engines of war such as the world never saw. Hmm. Technology. That was the solution. For if we could go to war with weapons so vastly superior as to be unstoppable, every opponent would have to yield before our onslaught. Where the architect obtained his strange knowledge from, he never wished to reveal. But in truth, Sigurd and I cared little for his mysterious ways. For whatever the source, our plans worked like a charm. And in a matter of years, Rivalon was ours. Interesting. Yes, we had done it. We had created our empire, and your father became its first and so far only ruler. For a few precious decades, peace had finally taken on a meaning. It was a bright flash, all too quickly extinguished along the tenebrous continuum of time. Well, from your t from your tale, I gather we had a mighty empire. I mean, worldwide. I mean, how could it fall apart so quickly? Long have I asked myself that question. Yet the answer is as simple as it is obvious. Human nature. Love, jealousy, anger, grief. All of these emotions proved more fatal to the stability of peace than a hundred thousand war machines could. I see. You see, Sigurd, the architect and I, remained close friends after our quest had come to completion. But then, one fateful day, a woman of unequaled beauty arrived at court. After but a glance, there wasn't a man's heart in the room, not aching for even her mildest attention or a most fleeting caress. Interesting. Your father, though married, courted her, as did the architect. For myself, I'd admit I'd given up the very secrets of magic in return for her love, but I knew rivalry could only lead to misery. And so it did. For bitter rivals, my two friends became. And when, in the end, Sigurd was the one to win her affections, the architect left the palace with such hatred in his eyes as to strike me as diabolical. Damn, even the architect got hit by that love, though. That sucks. A year their secret liaison lasted. One year, your father and beautiful Aurora were happy together. Then suddenly she died. And it took me a long time to find out she did so at the hand of the architect. Sigurd never knew. He was destroyed by grief. The mighty warlord withered, and with him, the soul of his empire flickered like a candle in the breeze. Until his own children blew it out forever and hacked to pieces the land that was to have been his legacy. Hmm. Where would this architect be? I mean, he killed my mother, but on top of that, maybe he could help us again. I promise I will tell you in due time. For now, I must keep silent. Please, don't press me any further on the subject. I won't, only out of respect for what you helped create. What has your research yielded? Just Gladly distract me. So. New dragon skills can be unlocked by spending research points. Oh, I already spent them all. I could have spent all those points on me. Oh, I could have just been a badass, man. I could have been ready for battle. I guess my army is gonna have to be my uh, my 
hutch for now. That sucks, man. You, you need to tell me these things ahead of time. Let's go back to the bridge. It's time to start a war. So we are where? I'm red, so I'm here. Can I zoom out? No, because I have to move around. I guess my siblings have basically, yeah, just split up the world at this point. Lord's Lock. So this is me, the capital, the nerve center of an empire. If it has captured the faction it belongs to, is utterly defeated. Public opinion here. Yeah, this is mine. So if I want to do anything, I'm going to have to deal with these things. Open the cards menu. There are different types of cards. Play them on countries to earn strategic advantage. Use others to increase your odds of winning battles the, uh, through auto-resolve and or real-time combat. There are many different types of cards. Oh, wait, oh. Go. So I can play Dragon Power, unlock the fire-breathing dragon skill for one combat round. Appear in Aura of Annihilation. The thing is, I don't understand what I'm doing with these cards. Pass a turn, turn one. Gold and gold income. Research and research income. Empire overview. So it's definitely a little bit uh, Rodal, Rome Total War esque, I would say. Because um, I'm clicking on countries and it's not doing anything. Trooper amount. Four troops have one movement point. So I can move these dudes. What does it do to move them? Cause an attack. I feel like, oh, land-based. So we're very weak. We have a country with uh, no real way of uh, expanding all over ocean right now. They can move one territory over, but it causes a battle. Two hunters, one transport. The transport doesn't matter too much. The two hunters versus my four troopers. This is probably not a hard fight. Species Elves, the species that is dominant in this country. What about this one? Elves are dominant everywhere? Find that hard to believe. There we go. Undead up there. More elves. Are elves always dominant? Oh, wait, it says elves dominant on this country. Okay, I thought it was continent for a second. So I, I do need some elf popularity. Empire overview. So you want casualties of war to be low, most likely. This is how we end the turn. All right. So what does this do? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what else to do. I guess I should. Uh, I should just end the turn. Combat progression. Multi GK. In this phase, you can see the moves your enemies are making. You can skip them by pressing the skip button. But what are they doing? Build factory, increase revenue. How do I use cards? I would have used a card. So they're fighting each other. Okay. All right, new news. Whoa. Dead Emperor's bastard son gets wizard's backing. Activists agree, Emperor must be a woman. Shocking pictures found on Raven. Really? Moral mistrust in Maxos returns. Introduces Emperor to chemical warfare. Whoa! Surrender while you can, Commander. Enemy now transports troops over the sea. More haste, less speed. Enemy invasion propels troops forward. And the standings are pretty much the same. Great dragon, 
glorious warlord. Once more you return from the battlefield red with the battle of fought. slain adversaries. And let me tell you, these victories of yours have not gone by unnoticed. What? In fact, to my great satisfaction, another pair of dauntless generals has joined our company. Interesting. Four military masterminds are now on board. More than enough to start a campaign of conquest on a truly grand scale. No doubt you're as anxious to meet them as they are to meet you. So why don't you go to the throne room, where I've instructed them to await your arrival. So are we ready? Is, is the cabinet now complete? Heavens no. You have the military firmly on your side. But civil emissaries too are bound to join our cause in due time. Of course. Indeed, I expect you'll be declared emperor before long. Yes, you heard me correctly. Emperor. It is inevitable. People have heard of you. The dragon. Their one hope of deliverance from war, oppression, and death. Soon hope will turn into confidence. And when ambassadors of the civilized races flock to the Raven, your political career will commence. You have a lot of hope, Maxos. You yourself will, of course, represent all humans. But the dwarves, elves, lizards, imps, and undead will want their say as well. And more. Still, let us worry about politics later. Today, it is your generals that count. All right, I shall take my leave. Throne room. Let's go for the throne room. My Lord Dragon, allow me to present your team of generals. Edmund, you already know. But I now have the pleasure of introducing you to Her Highness Lady Catherine, Queen of Westbridge, and Scarlet, not noble of birth, but the more so of heart. Hmm, are they both human? We four have pledged we will stand by you in your conquest as a rightful heir to Revelon's throne. Bastard no longer, you shall be known as Commander until the day comes that you shall be king. All hail the dragon. Hail. Hail. Yes, well, hail. <laughs> All right. Yes, Interact. Commander. Bastard no longer, am I? Seemed hardly proper to call you by that particular pet name on what was somewhat of an official occasion. But don't worry. <laughs> I may still slip up once or twice, even though my respect for you is in fact growing. You've got a knack for bloody brutal battle, and Feigned Hard never won fair victory. So apparently there was some kind of auto battle? It's going to take some getting used to, you know, to call you Commander. Verily, I was rather opposed to the notion. But Maxos in his infinite wisdom insisted we up the level of common courtesy toward you commoner would have done. Commander, though, it shall be. I would say it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Commander. But as it stands, I must approach you with a bit of reserve. True, to know we have a dragon knight for a leader is a great relief. For such a grand creature inspires bravado in the many hearts that will have to be won so that we may overthrow the spreading dark. So I'm just a means to but an end then. then again, you are the offspring, the male offspring to boot, of a sorry line prone to decadence and corruption. The very line, in fact, that is responsible for the downfall of the Empire in the first place. Forgive me then if I do wonder, will this commander Does there have muster? to be an emphasis on male and offspring? Because they call us females the fairer sex. But in truth, we are also more cunning, resilient, refined, and downright intelligent. Give an empire a queen, I say, and it will be ruled. Give it a king, and it will become an afterthought. For like any man, he is content when both his belly and his bed are filled with a prize piece of tender flesh. No more. Hmm. Fair enough, but I am much more than a man. Men are simple creatures, Commander, and should therefore be in charge of simple things only. Of course. I shall take my leave. And you. You're shorter. I wonder... Could she be a halfling? How's it hanging, Commander? I'm Scarlet, and you're a dragon, they tell me. Always wanted to ride one of those, though. I bet you're a little harder to handle than a horse. 
All part of the fun, though, I reckon. So uh, give me a shout when I can take you for a spin. Aren't you quite Treat the wildcat? I'll scratch your eyes out. Treat me well, and I'll purr like a kitten. Your choice, Commander. Well, that's very, very sexual. See you later. I guess there is stuff to do here. I only got one research point, buddy, so I don't think you're going to have anything from me. My lord. Wondrous. The raven. She speaks to me in my dreams. She tells me fantastic things, new fangled and new formed. I can make them all for you if you provide the right resources. I will in time, Romeo. I will. For now, keep dreaming. Draw them up. Write notes. Don't forget them. And we have some business to handle. So, apparently that went really freaking well, but I'd like to actually get to the business of fighting these wars. We currently have backing... If only 50%. You conquer starts earning gold. And all this other stuff. Alright, but I need... I want to fight. But we seem to be limited on how much we can do. Open the cards menu. Let's see if we can do something study based to help our economy or something. Uh, revenue increase. Increase the gold of this country by two... by 200% for one turn. How do I use it? How do I use it? See, that's the problem I'm having. Like, I don't seem to be able to use these. Is there, like, hotkeys I'm missing here? What's going on? You taught our enemy the meaning of defeat, Commander. But already I'm aching to give them another lesson. Come to battle! Hmm, what do you say, Scarlet? Shall we be victorious in the we end? We have but begun, Commander. But looking back, beginnings are always the most exciting. About whom, Commander? Catherine, for instance. Bit stuck up, ain't she? That's what a royal title will do to you. She used to be a proper queen and everything, with an entire country at her beck and call. How the mighty have fallen, eh? Me? I don't care for any of that rot. You got nothing. You got nothing to lose. What about, about him, Edmund? Shifty son of a bitch, ain't he? Acting all high and mighty all the time, calling imps idiots, dwarfs dullards, that sort of thing. Makes you wonder if there's a single thing he's not intolerant of. Fair enough. I shall take my leave. Yeah, let's just uh, attack a area, I guess. We need to start expanding. It just doesn't seem like the game's going to be entirely difficult, but I wonder if I'll be missing defense or something. Army splitter. No, all four. Let's go. When you're not satisfied with the move. This is a neutral country. If you capture it, it immediately becomes yours. As do the country's units, should there be any. I'm good with that. I'll take that shit. I mean, with all, all, all due respect, man, let's go. I want to fight a battle. Or at least take over territory. probably be attacked considering I don't have units. Manufactured transport by Carthan. I think this is going pretty well. The Revillian Times, or Rivel, Rivalon Times. Famed generals flock to the banner of the bastard, emperor indecisive, free naked dragon poster inside. What the hell's going on, ah, game? Commander. No doubt you've had an eventful and successful day so far, but don't rest on your laurels just yet, for I'm here to inform you the counselors have arrived, the ambassadors of the races whom you'll have to duel and deal with in the political arena. Interesting. Such is both the prerogative and the burden of an emperor to be. I understand. You may think your first duty is that of conquest, to bring the war to as swift an end as possible. 
but I'm afraid there is much more to being a monarch than military matters alone. As a commander, as an emperor, you'll have to constantly endeavor to find that delicate balance between your roles as strategist and statesman, for the one necessarily influences the other. Now, you may consider it strange that some will worry about the price of bread and others will gripe about taxes, when all around us, machines of war threaten the existence of the very realm. But if you give it a moment's further thought, this is only logical. Of course, people must be fed. We may find ourselves trapped amid a conflict of gargantuan proportions, but that does not mean the average man worries most about feeding his family, about the little things that make for a happy life. And when you have been given an empire, Commander, you have to be responsible for every matter, every obstacle, every creature, great and small. I see. This may seem daunting, but I have never and never will doubt for even an instant that you of all people will rise to the occasion. Your counselors await you in the throne room, Commander. Godspeed. Of course. Ah, oh, man. You have high hopes, don't you, Maxos? Aha! Shush, everyone, shush! Here comes the long-awaited Commander. The dragon that would deliver us from vile usurpers. The one deserving heir to Rivalon's throne. Or the guy that's willing to keep everything together for you to make more money, eh? <coughs> Let hey, me cut right weekend. to the chase, Commander, for I'm not a man who takes pride in his words, but in his pragmatism, rather. The entire realm is under siege, and the free peoples left need a strong leader. One who inspires. You see, there may be a war going on, Commander, but that doesn't mean you don't have a realm to rule. Oftentimes, political concerns will take precedence over military ones, no matter how trivial they may sometimes seem in these dark times. As much as possible, where your rule has been established, everyday life must continue like it would in times of peace, and everyday life concerns itself with everyday worries. The people will look to you for guidance in these matters. We, as their representatives, have witnessed your triumphs with mounting awe, and have agreed you are to be the one, the hero, who shall both restore the kingdom and recommence the workings of government. I therefore declare you Emperor. Long live the Emperor! Long live the Emperor! Uh, from now on, these counselors will bring before you various political problems. If you do not make a decision, the majority vote will always carry the motion. Interesting. So I can make the final decision, or they will just choose what they think is appropriate. I see a lot of cool people here. Kind of dorky looking, but, you know, I'm a dork. I think I'm going to end the episode here, guys. Uh, I think a lot of stuff has happened, and I think we're probably near the end of the tutorial. I would hope so. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.